Welcome to ESI's eHelp. This video covers eConsole and we're going to talk about phones and how you program the buttons on that phone through eConsole. So here I have logged in as a premier user, which is Wendy Terry, but even select users have the same options. Um, I'm extension 1004. And if I scroll down here to the left panel where all my selections are, I can click on phones. It's a very simple tab. It's simply listing the phones that are associated with your extension. It just so happens that I have only one, which is an ePhone 4. But if I had our ePhone Go or even our web phone, you would see all those associated here in this list. Now, what, I, what most users want to do is not really see the phone that they have, but they want to program the buttons. In order to do that, you would keep scrolling down here to button mapping. So I click on that, and here is my ePhone 4. So it's giving you the layout of the buttons, which for the ePhone 4, it is three pages of 12 keys. So this is your first 12, the second, and the third set of 12. All the buttons that I can program on a button are associated here. And as you can see, there are some buttons already programmed, so I can either leave those there, I can go over here and even clear the whole thing, so let's do that. I want to clear all my buttons and just start over, which a lot of people do. They get used to their phone, and, and as they get used to it, they figure out how they really prefer it programmed. So you come in here and rearrange it any way you want to. So how do you program a phone? So I would go over here and simply drag and drop. I'm using my mouse and holding down and just dragging over to this area, right? Now, let's say I want to take uh, this line three key for whatever reason and I wanna put it up here. I can drag it from one key to the other. What I cannot do though is say I want line three to be over line one instead. I can't drag on top of that. It's not gonna let me do that. So I would have to delete this key and then move line three over there, right? All right, so let's go ahead and just delete those. Start over, so there's line one. Let's just do a couple of lines. Uh, maybe I want some special features. Remember, this set um, is gonna be the main set of keys you see first on the ePhone 4. So I usually like to put my most important things on my first page. Uh, so maybe I do, um, I'm an agent, or I wanna be able to uh, log in and out of the queue. So I put that here. Then I would go here to call a queue. Maybe I want to monitor a queue to see if it's active or not. So I drag that over here. And because a system has more than one queue, it's gonna pop up this list to give you a selection. Well, okay, you wanna uh, program a queue key, but which queue? So for Grins, let's just say it's customer service. So I click on this number. And notice here, it's got the call queue number, which is fine. You don't really wanna change that. But over here, I really don't want my button labeled, say, CQ500. Maybe that doesn't mean anything to me. So um, maybe I want to put in um, customer service queue, right? Remember, you only have, I think it is uh, 12 digits. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Actually, it's only 10 digits, so you have to use abbreviations a lot of times. So let's go ahead and save that. And so even though this is um, a call queue 5000, it is going to show up on my display in my ePhone 4 as customer service queue, all right, which is a little more meaningful to me than 5,000. So let's program another one. And I wanna go down here and say uh, maybe accounting. So again, I wanna update the name and save it. Okay, then uh, let's do some other things. Uh, Park, our company uses Park a lot. So I wanna be able to not only park a call, but I wanna observe park queues. So let's go ahead and program queues over here again. And notice that these three up here are actually parks, not like a agent type queue. So park 10 is the most popular. And again, I would rather say park 10 on here on my button. And we'll do one more call queue. Let's pick park 11. And I'm gonna update my uh, label and save. Okay, so I do a lot of pickups. Um, pickup is where you can pick up a ringing, it's another ringing extension. So if I, another coworker's phone was ringing, I can click pick up and dial their extension and pick up that ringing call. Okay, so let's do speed dials because by and large, that's the most popular thing. All right, speed dials. Pretty simple. You have a list of all your extensions on this system right here. So let's go ahead and program a couple of these. I picked Arthur Morgan. 
and his name shows up at Arthur Morgan. But hey, maybe Arthur doesn't go by Arthur, he goes by Art. All right, that's fine. Just update his label. Save that change. Let's do some more speed dials, at least a few more. Um, again, you can just scroll down here, maybe scroll to a completely different page. And I want to pick Ruth and save those changes. Um, no problem. Now, those are pretty easy. They're just extensions on your phone system. But what if I want other speed dials, like my home? So what you would do is you would put in here whatever phone number you're looking for. Uh, let's see. This is ESI's main number. And I want to call it ESI. You could even maybe call it ESI main number as opposed to their customer service number and save those changes. And again, once this is programmed or sent off to your phone, when I press that key, it'll automatically out dial. So if you have a lot of um, uh, customers that you work with, uh, or maybe even like home personal numbers that you want on there, uh, whatever, you would program them through your speed dial key. So let's just do one more to make sure you got that. So again, I want to type in a number here. It's a fake number, I think you get the idea. Um, and maybe we want to call that, um, maybe I work in accounting or not accounting, but I work in marketing and I want to have a speed dial for the printer that we use for our materials. Fine, save that there and it's a one touch press from now on. Okay, so I go and get all my buttons programmed, no problem. Then I want to go over here and save. Let's say I was doing programming that I already had buttons programmed when I first got in here. I started making changes and I don't know, I just messed up or I changed my mind before you click save, before you click save, you can press the revert key, which basically undoes all the changes that you made. But if you click save, you're not gonna be able to reset that back. And then of course, as we saw, you can delete all your keys and start all over again if that's what you wanna do. So I'm gonna click save. And this is important. This pop-up's gonna show here that says, okay, A, your keys just got saved, but you need to go over and reboot your phone. How do you reboot your phone? On the back, you'll see the Ethernet cable plugged into the back, or maybe it has a power supply associated with it. You need to, um, depending on which one you have, you simply unplug and plug the cable back in. You'll see your phone reboot, and then all your new keys will show up. Magical. Okay, so that is our button mapping. Uh, one other thing to show you is up here. So when I come into, remember how we looked at the phones associated with my extension? There are people that have more than one phone that has DSS or programmable keys. If I had more than one of those type of phones, I would select that from this list. But in this case, I only have one. And again, keep in mind that even if I had ePhone Go, which is our mobile client associated with my extension, it would never appear under, under this list because those the ePhone Go doesn't have buttons on it, so there's nothing to program. Same goes for ePhone 7. ePhone 7 is touchscreen only. It doesn't have buttons in the traditional sense, so I would never see that listed in the button programming section. Okay, that's it for button programming. Thank you, and be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks.